Ruben Garcia is a native of the border, born and raised in El Paso, Texas, Jesuit educated. He went to El Paso Jesuit High School. There was one. It closed. We want to reopen it. Anybody want to go there? Reopen the Jesuit High School. Then went to Rockhurst in Kansas City, Missouri, and Seattle in Seattle, Washington, Seattle U. From 70 to 78, he served as the director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry, the Department of the Catholic Diocese of El Paso. And in 1978, Rubén, along with four other individuals, founded Annunciation House, with whom he has been, the house that he has served ever since, becoming, serving its as its director. In response to the great need for pro bono legal services, brought about the, by the tremendous flow of refugees from El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Honduras, navigating the El Paso Juarez corridor in the early 80s, Annunciation House, helped initiate the process that led to the establishment of Las, America, uh, Las Americas Asylum, Refugee Asylum Project. Ruben served as the first president of the board. For almost 33 years, the Houses of Hospitality operated by Annunciation House on the U.S.-Mexican border in El Paso, Texas, have provided hospitality to over 110,000 immigrants, refugees, and undocumented persons from Mexico, Central America, and for 40 other countries. We welcome you, Ruben Garcia, tonight, Founders Week. Thank you. Is this working? Is it working? Okay, great. We're in business. Gracias, Maria Teresa. Um, it's a delight to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation to join you. Um, Maria Teresa mentioned that there are some of you that were there last night at St. Pius X and you are here. That just goes to show that there are people that are in it for the punishment of it. <laughs> so um, thank you for coming back. Um, quisiera empezar dándole la bienvenida a la comunidad que viene que está aquí de Guatemala. Es un placer estar aquí con ustedes esta noche. Hemos tenido el privilegio de darle hospedaje a miles de guatemaltecos que han cruzado la frontera allí de Juárez a El Paso a través de los años. No vemos a muchos guatemaltecos ahorita, pero vimos literalmente miles de ellos, especialmente durante esa temporada de los 80 cuando había tanta violencia en El Salvador y Guatemala. Y yo estoy muy agradecido con ustedes porque ustedes fueron quien permitieron que la Casa de Anunciación pudiera descubrir su identidad. Y esa es la identidad del de acompañamiento al inmigrante, que es una de las maneras que Dios se manifiesta en el mundo ahora que ustedes nos ayudan a entender lo que es ser iglesia en estos tiempos modernos. Así es que es un placer estar aquí con ustedes esta noche. Eh? Um, it is a delight to be here with you this evening and to be able to share a little bit about what it is that the border is like for us, but also especially and I think this was one of the reasons that the invitation was extended for me to come here and be with you in Omaha, and that is the fact that your state legislature is in the process of wanting to be very naughty. Uh, and so, as is true, whenever anybody is naughty, then it calls on us to stand up and to say, saben que, no, 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 no. I'd like to begin by sharing with you a story that we experienced there on the border two years ago. There was a woman from El Salvador that crossed the river uh, in the middle of the night. She had a coyote, and the coyote helped her cross from Juarez into El Paso. Once she was on the El Paso side of the border, the coyote deserted her. And so he said to her, I want you to wait for me here. I will be back for you. He didn't come back, and she was standing there, wet from having crossed the river, cold, and when 
the sun rose, she began to walk, realizing he's not going to come back. And so she started walking and walking, and little by little, she made her way to where there was more traffic, and then she started asking, is there a church someplace? And someone would say, well, walk down this way. And someone says, well, look, you know, I think the nearest church is still pretty far. Here's some money for the bus. She got on the bus. She um, got off the bus, started walking again. And eventually, she found herself making her way. It was a weekday, Tuesday or Thursday, can't remember, to San Antonio de Padua, Catholic Church. It so happened that there in that parish, there was a group of elderly women that had this ministry where they gave out food baskets to families, many of them undocumented families. They would give food baskets and some clothing to people. It was something that was pretty well organized. They would gather there in the morning. They would go to Mass. After Mass, they would go over to where they had their food. They would put the food baskets together, and then families would start arriving at about 10 o'clock, and they would share the food baskets with them. This woman, her name was Morena, arrives when they're in the midst of distributing the food, and she walks in, and she asks them, is there anybody who can help me? And she begins to tell them the story that she had just crossed the river. She didn't know anybody, but that she had a daughter in Los Angeles that needed her and that she needed to make her way to Los Angeles. Is there any way that anyone could help her? This group of women that had this ministry responded to her, welcomed her, gave her a change of clothing so that she could get out of her wet clothing and then invited her to join with them and share a meal. In the process, one of them called me and asked me, look, we have this woman that just arrived. She's from El Salvador. Would you guys be able to take her in? And we said, absolutely, that's what we do. Uh, they said, we'll bring her down. Fine. After they were done distributing the baskets, after they had done finished eating their meal, they asked this woman, Morena, if she was ready that they were going to take her to this house of hospitality. And one of the women who drove said, I'll drive you. Another one of the women said, I'll go with you. So the two women that were part of the group got in the front, Morena got in the back, and they drove out of the parking lot. They had to get on the freeway and travel five or six miles. They travel the freeway, they get off on the exit that's going to bring them to Annunciation House. When they get off the exit and are coming down one of the streets, that will connect them to San Antonio Street, which is where we are. The woman that is driving, and you need to understand, these are elderly women that do this. She's driving, and she begins to realize, I am being followed. I am being followed. She continues to drive. She turns onto San Antonio Street, and sure enough, this unmarked pickup truck turns onto San Antonio Street. She drives down San Antonio, an Annunciation House is located where San Antonio and Olive Street make a Y, and our building is a triangular-shaped building, two-story brick building, that fits into that Y. That y. The woman drives, and she makes a U-turn in the front of the point to, to go down the side to eventually get into the parking lot when the pickup truck then accelerates, speeds up, passes her, and cuts her off in the front. And then another pickup truck pulls up behind them to block them off. And two immigration agents, ICE agents, from the pickup truck in the front get off and begin to approach. Two immigration ICE agents from the back get out of the truck and begin to approach the car. They've got their, their, their badges that they carry around their neck. And one of the agents approaches the woman that is driving and says, do you realize that what you are doing is illegal? Can I see your driver's license? So you can imagine how afraid and terrified these women were. They take out the driver's license. He asked for the driver's license of the other woman um, that was sitting in the front seat and then turns to Morena in the back seat and says, I know you're illegal, get out, you're under arrest. The agents from the pickup truck in the back are there by the door as she gets up, they put handcuffs on her and they arrest her. 
the ICE agent from the front pickup goes back to his computer to run the driver's license of these two older women. After he runs the check and there's nothing on the computers, he comes back and he returns the driver's license to the two women and says to them, my boss said to return, my supervisor said to return your driver's license back to you and to let you proceed. One of the women asked, are we in trouble? Are we going to be arrested? And he said, no, you just need to understand that what you are doing is illegal. They got on their pickup trucks and they drove off and they took Morena. Okay, let's look at what were they doing. You had a homeless immigrant cross the river because she needed to get to her 15-year-old daughter. She arrived at the church where this group of women is carrying out a ministry to the poor. This homeless woman arrives, and her clothing is wet, and so they proceed to clothe the naked. This woman has not eaten from the previous day, and so they proceed to feed the hungry. This woman has no place to sleep, and so they proceed to provide hospitality by bringing them to Annunciation House. And agents of the federal government, your government, my government, stop these older women and say, what you are doing is illegal, and you can be arrested. Okay. My question to you as we begin this evening to ask here in Omaha, Nebraska, on this day, February the 10th, is that how you choose to be defined? If that is how you wish to be defined, then my advice to you is to remain silent and do nothing. If you instead say, that is not who I am, and that is not who I will allow to be defined as being, then you know what your work is before your legislature in the state of Nebraska. You will not say to me that to do the most basic human acts a human being can do can be made illegal not in my name will you do that. And that's your task, and that's your work. 